We begin with this question. How do we mobilize <coughs> Jesus' peace? You'll see what I mean as we go along. The day he died, Jesus said this in John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you. Jesus is talking to his disciples. Peace I leave with you. My peace, Jesus' peace, I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give unto you. Not just worldly peace, but something far, far greater that transcends our current situations. Second part of the verse. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Now, in the Greek there, it's, it's saying prevent yourself or prevent your heart from being troubled or agitated. And then it says, neither let it be afraid. And the Greek is better rendition is timid. And let not your heart be timid. Now, how can this happen day after day? How can you live your life with the peace of Jesus Christ? Jesus wants us to be bold as we walk with him, and he expects us to keep his words in the forefront of our minds daily. This is why morning prayer and Bible study are critically important. King David of Israel <coughs> had God and God's teachings in the forefront of his mind. 1 Samuel 17, 36. Your servant, David, talking to King the king of Israel at that time, your servant has killed both lion and bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine, referring to Goliath, will be like one of them, dead, seeing he has defied the armies of the living God. In verse 37, David said, The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine or from Goliath. David knew God was going to help him because it was a right and a just cause. Another example of forefront thinking in a crisis is in Daniel 3.17. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are speaking to the king of Babylon, Daniel 3.17. Our God, whom we serve, is able, they had their God and his teachings in their mind, is able to deliver us from the fiery furnace. God has that kind of power. And he will deliver us from your hand, O king. They, they were not agitated, nor were they timid. Right? Classic, going back to what Jesus said. They weren't agitated. They were just calmly taking it. I mean, they could die a fiery, painful death. But if God said, okay, that's how you finish, that's how you finish. They weren't agitated and they weren't timid and they just said to the king, King Nebuchadnezzar, king of the great Babylonish empire, in verse 18, he said, But if not, be it known unto you, O king, King Nebuchadnezzar, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the golden image that you have set up. So back to Jesus in John 16:33. These things have I spoken to you, Jesus talking to his followers. Have I spoken to you that in me, we just pause on in me, what does that mean? Fully connected to Jesus in the forefront of your mind on a day-to-day -day basis. In me, you have, may have peace. In the world, you'll have tribulation. What is he saying? He's saying, even though you're in the midst of tribulation as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were, as David was <laughs> once he got out onto the battlefield. You know, he was, what, uh, less than 100 yards from Goliath. If, if he missed with that slingshot, he was going to have some serious problems. But God helped him. Okay, Jesus is saying that you may have peace, a peace of God mixed with human tribulation that helps you overcome like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did. Then it says, but be of good cheer in a lot of Bibles. In the Greek, it means have courage, which makes a lot more sense. You know, you're going to have peace in the world. You'll have tribulation, but be of good courage. That makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Because I have overcome the world, says Jesus, because God is going to be helping you. So have courage. God will help you. Jesus is offering us superhuman peace for the trials of this life. Jesus came teaching people how to walk in peace. Morning after morning after morning, day after day after day. 
Luke 1, 78. The day spring, not a word we don't normally use, but in the Greek it means the dawn or the rising of the light. And we all know if we go out early enough in the, and we see the darkness change to the brilliant light of the sun coming up in the east. The day spring from on high, from heaven, has visited us, verse 79, to give light, to bring light to those who sit in darkness. Those are peaceless people. Those are people who are stirred up in trials and troubles. Those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of the death, that's those who are facing death or facing dangerous situations. To guide our feet, those who follow Jesus, into the way of peace. So Jesus came to teach us, to guide us into the way of peace. What does he mean, way of peace? A road a highway, or a progression forward. That's the way of peace. So we are in the process of learning the way of peace. How do we do that? Through what Jesus is teaching. Paul explains the peace learning process in Philippians 4, 6. Be anxious for nothing. Don't, don't be agitated. Be, don't be timid. For everything, but in everything, in all your daily activities, by prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known unto God. Why? If God is God, God already knows your requests. By you talking to God in prayer, you're helping your mind keep God and his teachings in the forefront of your mind. So when you go out and face trials and troubles in the day, it was there that morning, you can still recall it. Philippians 4, 7. And the peace of God. How peaceful is God? God doesn't have any worries. God doesn't have any problems. He wishes we would behave better down here on planet Earth, for sure. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. We can't even comprehend the peace of God. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding will if you're connected, if you're in Jesus, if you had God's thinking in the forefront of your mind, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. This is why morning prayer and morning Bible study are critical because you want to have their thinking, you want to have the peace of God in the forefront of your mind, no matter what happens to you today or, no, or, or the next day or the week, right? God is working with you because you are working with God and He wants you to be successful. So we need to have God's words in the forefront of our mind and we have to make the effort to get them there. Jesus is warning those who will listen of the increasing lawlessness in the end times. Matthew 24, 12. And because of lawlessness, because lawlessness will abound, it's going to be expanding and growing. The love of many will grow cold. The natural human love of letting live, live and let live, of letting people you know, get along and helping people get along. Now we're seeing people shooting and murdering and cutting heads off and doing horrible, horrible things. The natural human love is shrinking away. And we are seeing it on television and news reports and so on. Billions do not recognize that lawlessness is the enemy of peace. Peace, lawlessness. Lawlessness is against peace. Okay, this is obvious when we look at three titles. You'll see what I mean. Police, you see a police car drive up with two men or two people in it, right? Police, okay, that's one title. Peace officer. Well, that's the same as the police, right? Peace, he's a peace officer. He keeps the peace, right? And the third title, the law. So police, peace officer, and law are all the same thing. So what does this mean? That means the peace officer is attempting to keep the peace by utilizing the law and getting the criminals who break the law out of the way and off the streets. For generations, people have understood that human peace comes from law and order. It's like, you think about it for two seconds, oh yeah, peace comes from law and order. Jesus is like a godly policeman who stands against criminals and lawless activities. Hebrews 1 verse 8, 
Your throne, O God, referring to Jesus, your throne, O God, is, for, is forever and ever. The scepter, a scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. Verse 9, you have loved righteousness, right ways of peace. That's all righteousness is, the right ways that bring peace. And hated lawlessness. Jesus Christ hates lawlessness, which is hurting other people. Jesus stands against lawless people, including, hold your breath, including lawless Christians. What? No, that can't be. Let's read it. Matthew 7, 23. And then I will declare to them, Jesus speaking, I never knew you. Go back one verse and you'll see he's referring to people preaching and teaching in the name of Jesus. Who is that? That's Christians. He says, I will declare to them, I never knew you. We never began to have a relationship. And then he says, depart from me. Go away from me. You who, here it comes, you who practice lawlessness. Now, all Christians would be wise to ask themselves this question often. Am I lawless in the eyes of God? Don't just think human laws. Think God laws. Most people are like, oh, you shouldn't be worried about God's law. <laughs> yes, you should, because Jesus said, I never knew you depart from me because you, these kind of Christians, practice lawlessness, God lawlessness, right? Lawlessness against God's laws. When Jesus sets up the kingdom of God on earth, crime and lawlessness will stop. For a thousand years on planet Earth with Jesus sitting on the throne in Jerusalem, there will be peace and more peace and more peace and no war and criminals will be dealt with swiftly. Matthew 13, 41. The Son of Man will send out his angels and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and those, those people who practice lawlessness. When he's setting up his kingdom, he's going to remove those who practice lawlessness. Matthew 13, 42, and I will cast them into a, fire, a furnace of fire, and they will, there will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. It's going to be a terrible situation, but the crime and the lawlessness will be stopped. Verse 43, then once, that's, once the crime and violence and lawlessness is stopped, then the righteous big highfalutin word, law-abiding people, is all it means, will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. If you, if you even have the slightest concern, you need to pay attention to the words of Jesus and make sure you do not live lawlessly against the law of God. Jesus has given us a definition for sin, but most people do not want to focus on this definition he gives. He gives it through the Apostle John, 1 John 3, 4. Whoever commits sin, we should be listening to what Jesus has to say through John. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. So we put this here. To remind our, to put in the forefront of our mind, sin is lawlessness. Go back, look in 1 John 3, 4. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. Satan the devil is the super lawless one. 2 Thessalonians 2, 8. The lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord, Jesus, will consume with the breath of his mouth. Verse 9. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, who is the super lawless one, with all power and signs and lying wonders, and people will be tricked by miraculous events, fire coming down from heaven and so on. As national and international crime spiral out of control, you can almost see it on a daily basis watching the news, each person should mobilize the Jesus peace plan. Peace appears almost a hundred times in the New Testament. My suggestion for mobilizing God's peace plan is to select for yourself 
your favorite top seven peace verses. Just pick seven out of the hundred and pray one of those peace verses every day during the week and then repeat it and be asking God to give you peace like that passes all understanding, right? So Paul says it this way, Philippians 4, 7, the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will God will protect your hearts and minds from being agitated and being timid, protect your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ.